What's up, everybody? We are the Fung Brothers. We are here with our very oh, Chinese. Okay, keep going. <laughs> we are here with our Chinese comedian friend Jenny Yang. Hello. And we're here to talk about an article that we found on the internet called "Signs You Grew Up with Chinese Immigrant Parents." And by Chinese immigrant parents, we mean that your parents are Chinese and they raised you in a non-Asian country. Let's, Let's get, get into it. it. Next up, you ate a lot of delicious Chinese cooking over the years, but don't know how to cook any of it because your mom never let you in the kitchen. It's just like a lot of kids can't speak Chinese. I, can't, I don't know how to speak Chinese very well. My parents speak Chinese, so it's like, how did that happen, right? It's not like my parents said, no, we don't want to teach you Chinese at all. It's just like, maybe I didn't pick it up enough. They didn't maybe. really put it as a top priority. Yeah, it was a top priority. They didn't try that hard. And I kind of wish they did. <laughs> so shameful. But I feel like, yeah, in America, they want you to cook some like, pasta or something like that. They're not really yeah. looking for you to <laughs> get the oils and the big ass flame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna be ching chonging while you cook Chinese food, dog. If you get the wok hay. Why do you, you, you do not need to do hay. it like that? If you get the wok hay. Hey, baby, you want dinner tonight? That's sexy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Absolutely no outside shoes were worn in the house. It never made any sense to me because you wear shoes to protect your feet from things that are outside. Yes. But when you wear your shoes indoors, you're bringing all that outside inside. And what sense does that make? You know what's nasty is like uh, non-Asian people, they'll like put their shoes up on their bed and stuff like this. <laughs> oh, I hate that. They'll like, they'll like put it on their, they lie in their bed with their shoes on. That is disgusting. Next up, you never received much sympathy for your problems nor praise for your accomplishments. I knew some friends whose parents had relatives fly in or drive in from other cities just for their high school graduation. Oh yeah. That's or, not an accomplishment. <laughs> no, high school is totally assumed. My my parents never talked to me about graduating high school or even college. Like oh, they yeah. was expect they did come to my college graduation, uh, but I didn't go to the big ceremony. I only went to my department, my business school one, and they came and my dad was just like, mm, "Good job. Good job. Okay. Let's go get something to eat." Right? And like I didn't have no big party with no. a bunch of friends. It was just like, "Cool. Hey. <laughs> solid. <laughs> like, solid stuff." It was stuff, like, son. "You did the bare minimum. <laughs> Good for you. I actually asked my dad because uh, I was like, Dad, what if I didn't graduate college? Like, what would you say? And then he's just like, he was driving. Ha! And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> he just he didn't, he didn't even see. He was just like, huh, what a funny thought. I'm not going to think about that anymore. We, we get no praise. praise. Coming up next. Whenever you were excited about something, your parents were quick to throw some cold water over it. I have to say, one of the things that kept me going as a straight A student, my mom always said to me ever since I was little, you must have perfect score because just like the scientists who build the rocket, if they mess up just once, the <laughs> rocket ship will explode. That's, That's a, a really good analogy. That's a super that actually, Chinese immigrant. This should actually never be applied to. Yo, that is life. so much pressure for a six year old. Do not mess up or we'll die. All right, coming up next. Throughout your studies, you weren't allowed to date, and once you graduated, your parents were suddenly all like, how come you have no girlfriend, boyfriend? True. 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 Like, so we graduated college, and my mom is not like heckling us about wives yet, yes. but I know that throughout growing up, dating was not even a conversation. Oh, no. Relationships was not a conversation. No. Like, Valentine's Day, I, I was always confused on Valentine's Day, because I was like, can I? Do something for a girl if I show and that, my my mom and dad are not the people to ask, right? They no. like no, totally they don't care. Mom and dad would not they don't celebrate Valentine's They have no response. They're just um, like, I don't know, why do you think about this very superficial, <laughs> meaningless thing that does not contribute uh, to it? If you are not going to marry the girl, then do not give her your heart. And when you did eventually meet someone, heaven forbid they be one of another race or two of the same sex or three, an artist. Oh, it's notable to mention that the reason the Chinese parents hate dating an artist or their kid being an artist because where they're from, artists are poor. Where in the West, if you have to look at their society, artists are placed a little bit higher because there is a history of artists becoming very rich and powerful and becoming politicians and becoming presidents. No entertainer in Asia will ever become president. Ever. That's how low they view entertainers. Ronald Reagan, Schwarzenegger, Jesse Ventura. We're like comedians or YouTubers or whatever, but uh, if a comedian equals a clown to my dad. Yeah. When you think of traditional Chinese comedy, it's like a guy that's flipping on his back, like and spinning on his on head, head. Yeah, like like just doing somersaults. Woo! And then he's just like, doo, doo, doo. there's like, a scene in Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee yeah. where there's these Chinese entertainers that are literally just doing somersaults and flipping on their head, like <laughs> over in a circle. There's this like old school tradition of of telling jokes though, do it in like a kind of a beat. Quai bar. Yeah, I know what it's called. Yeah. Like that. Rapping. Yo, me tell me what I want on it. I'll tell you what I want on it. I'll tell you what I want on it. I'll tell you what I want on it. 
Why do I even know how to do that much? <laughs> Coming up next. When you weren't in school, you were attending coaching schools like Kumon or working at your parents' Chinese restaurant. Still not sure who had it worse. Well, and they just don't want their kids having a fun summer. <laughs> okay, that's the last thing the Chinese parents want is the kids to have a fun American yeah. summer. They ain't trying to kick it. Yeah. Kick it. You know, uh, like white parents, for example, in any country, I think they went through like a rockabilly, like, daddy takes the T-bird away. Like that's my image of like white parents, like when they were younger, it's just like, they, like, all, had have, leather they all like have like flipped hair, and they're all like getting burgers, and they're like, hey babe. And I uh, was like, hey, are we going steady? Jimmy, like, hey, Jimmy's going to pick us up like, in his T-bird. Like West Side Story, like they was in a K-Zock. Yeah, K-Zock. One of That's my image Slap of Slapping a bass. <laughs> what was the point of that? I don't even All know. Alright, moving on. <laughs> Up next. Your mom always interfered with your packing, usually armed with a pair of disposable undies and enough food to feed a family for a month. <laughs> I don't know about the disposable undies. My mom had disposable undies. Really? If for okay. real. That's, how, that's some hardcore Chinese I, Yeah, that's true. I, I know. I've heard of it, but my mom didn't do it. You know, Just in case. I'll say this. Chinese moms are pretty paranoid. Because they're in a different country and they don't know what's going on, so they always overpack. Exactly. And this is true. My mom always overpacks. And if it's food that we have to pack and we're going to like Hong Kong or China to meet relatives or something, we have to pack a lot of gifts like yeah. smoked salmon. Even um, things that nobody's gonna eat once it's brought over. Like, it's not. They don't like smoked salmon that much. A few times your parents took you to the beach, they sweated away, covered head to toe, and were far more interested in eating seafood than swimming. I, I made the mistake one time of having my cousin come visit me in Los Angeles, and I took her with me to the beach where I played beach volleyball and even my parents haven't seen me in a swimsuit but she saw me and like apparently word got around oh Jenny was wearing a bikini or whatever <laughs> I heard for, about it from my own mom it was like she a heard thing it. in your she, house she heard about it from like the relatives in Taiwan I'm like really that is, is so funny. Be? She saw a medicine. well I'll... I remember one time uh, we were all crab hunting with the church on this beach and I found somehow just hidden in the sand the largest crab out of everybody and everybody gathered around and then they measured it to make sure that because you know there's legal regulations about what you can take and they all got excited they're like yeah 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 yeah, you could take this you can take this and go eat this and everyone was like ah like hey. like, like I, that was the most I excited I ever got the community <laughs> Chinese people love seafood we love food man they love food and if it's free oh my oh, god oh man Oh if you just God. find yeah, it, I you found it. Oh. I just found a big dungeness crab. I'm a winner today. Coming up next. Your parents and relatives never fail to air their opinions regarding your weight at family gatherings. True. Yes. Especially for the women. My sister got this. They would just be like, wow, oh, Jenny, wow. Ah, so, so strong, so, so, so big, ugh. so thick. You know, good. I mean, the young, the young guy, the guy like the thinner girl better, okay? Yeah, yeah. Wow, you're so strong. Too strong. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, but like Chinese people for some reason feel the need to police our bodies. And it's, I, I definitely disagree with that. You know, it's about shame. I think they see it as they they care about you and they want to help. But yeah. obviously they may not know how to do it. Yes. I do think yeah. that in America it's different because if you call someone fat, it's almost like insulting their life. Yeah. Like you're, saying you're, they're just a garbage yeah. person. Like if you say you're fat, that's like one of the worst dish it dishes. Is. Yes. But in Chinese, it's like you're fat. Do something about it. It's like uh, you have purple hair. Change your purple hair back to black. It's ugly. Exactly. Your body has extra layers of glutinous jelly on it. Take them away. Yeah. Last one. And that as you grow older, you finally see their tough love approach was the natural default for nervous parents living in a strange country. I thought she summed it up pretty well with that one. I think it's tough because in that same overprotectiveness, sometimes the kids end up a little awkward and can be like not fully yeah. socialized yeah. in American society because they weren't allowed to like assimilate to a certain extent, they were kind of sheltered. Uh, this is my final takeaway from this is I think that the author has some things that she's uncomfortable with the way she was raised. She has some unresolved issues in terms of being unhappy that I wish it wasn't this way. Why couldn't it have been like a more smoother, more suave upbringing like my white friends, you know, just parents who are not immigrants. Immigrant parents almost categorically don't get it. 
And if you always constantly live by this expectation that like, oh, we didn't go on cool skiing trips and my parents' mom wears a bikini and she knows what's cool and my mom doesn't, you're always gonna feel like you were deprived of something in your childhood. I think she's being honest. I think she's saying that she is appreciative at the end of the article, she's clearly appreciative and she gives her parents credit, but she does say, no, these things were not dope. It's not like I read that list and was like, oh, I love every single one of these. Yeah, this is tight, you exactly. know, like, this is how I'm gonna raise my kid. I'm like, let me pick and choose the ones that I feel are valuable and then I'm gonna carry those on. Or the lessons, maybe yeah, not even those actual things, but the, yeah. the larger lessons contained in those like, very seemingly annoying things that our parents did. I don't you were the immigrant. <laughs> what, you immigrant. Know. Immigrant speaks. speaks. <laughs> I think what's great though about us now is that as you know, smart young Chinese immigrants or kids of Chinese immigrants is we can think through these things. You know what I mean? We mm -hmm. can talk about it. We could decide for ourselves. Like, how much of this do we want to carry on for our kids? Or you know, for example, just simple stuff like cooking. You know, we can make a decision about like taking pride in that. It's just respect. Respect to you know bringing up kids, being an immigrant. You know, it's, it's tough. You know, that's why we made this video because we wanted to bring uh, Jenny in and just talk about it because we've all had similar experiences mm -hmm. and we want to let you guys know, you know, you're not alone. And there's absolutely very normal people and successful people who had this upbringing. Yeah. So, it's all good. We're, We're all, all just, just doing, doing our best. best. Thank you everybody for watching that video. If you relate to the list, let us know what you relate to in the comment section below. And shout out to our friend Jenny. She's a comedian, so check out her stuff. We're gonna put her link like right here. So follow her on Twitter. She's super funny. She did a video for BuzzFeed, and this list was actually off BuzzFeed, uh, written by Monica Tan. Subscribe to our channel, watch this video, watch this video. We're the Fung Brothers. That's Jenny Yang. Peace! Peace! Woo, Jenny! Oh my god! <laughs> you just slapped.